first up, a, a very busy weekend at uh, Turanga Waiwai Marae, of course, the heart of the Kingitanga in uh, in Tainui, Waikato, uh, Narawa here, of course, and a significant date. In fact, a strategic date as we start the year together. Joining us on the program now uh, from the Free Speech Union, Jonathan Ayling. Kia ora, good morning. Happy New Year to you, sir. Kia ora, Andrew. Great to be back with you. In terms of the event itself, I mean, it was a, uh, a significant start to the year. I mean, previously, of course, uh, the Ratana celebrations, which are happening uh, this coming week, that's, that's normally the first political event of the year uh seems kingy tonga got the drop on that well that's right and and it, it seems that the the reign of the current king might def be defined by uh the incredible hui that he called over this weekend and yep. and uh, the turnout was remarkable and and from the free speech union's perspective uh this is exactly how we should be going about addressing differences in our society look the subject that was being raised there is one of the most fraught uh, we have to address uh, amongst a, a menu of incredibly difficult conversations uh, in our society at the moment. But race relations really is at the heart of so many of those debates yep. and the role of te reo, the role of te tiriti. Uh, we within the first couple of days of the new government, we had seen mass protests across the country. We were really pre pleased to see, uh, frankly, leadership in this space from the Kingitanga to stand up and say uh, korero and wānanga and dialogue and and conversations in the space are really what is needed to take us forward and so we applauded from the start we were really pleased to see representatives from uh the political parties most of the political parties they weren't all there we were pleased to see the government did front in the end yeah. uh but but really i think the stands to define many of the conversations that we're going to be having this year you and i were just saying uh really this this was at the, the way we started our, our year and it's going to flow into rasana it's going to flow into waitangi it's going yep. to flow into the start of uh parliament and so over the next few months at least if not this year this is the conversation we're going to be having so my question is how are we going to have this conversation yep. and i think largely it's been a great start now um the prime minister conspicuous by his absence having said that the leader of the labor party also wasn't there there was a, a pre-hui meeting with the prime minister and king tohatia is that enough or is it bad form from our prime minister do you think uh, look, there's a host of calculations here, so I wouldn't want to overlay laid in his absence. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we were really pleased that uh, Tama Potaka, the um, minister responsible for Crown Iwi relations, yep. did France. Uh, Dan Bidwa, the chairperson of the uh, Maldives Affairs Select Committee, was there as well. And so the, that representation of the government uh, or of the National Party really yep. was was quite important. Uh, you know, Shane Jones has uh, famously defined this as has potentially just been a big whinge fest. Yep. Look from from the presence that the FSU had there on Saturday. That that's not the impression we got. These are really important conversations. As I said, the question is okay. How are we going to facilitate these conversations now? Is there really an openness to all the different perspectives yep. getting to have their say, or will wrong think define this and only one side get to be uh, party to it? Look, if there's a political calculation, I would say New Zealand First and Acts thought that they they stood to gain nothing by being there and yeah. at a political level at a, a at a real politic level that probably was true i think it is disappointing they were they were conspicuous by the absence where i think there is uh, an eagerness amongst all kiwis to have a conversation around what the treaty means and, and and how we continue to bring it in to modern new zealand uh and and there's a wide variety of opinions so that may mean a very minimalist interpretation of the treaty or a more expansive interpretation of the treaty really the conversation has to be had though and uh and and the uh, the most appropriate place for that is parliament mm -hmm. but but really this alternative venue was a good start as well and so i think you know national great that they did show up uh, unfortunate act in new zealand first weren't there Taking a look at, at some of the things that were being debated, and there was this leaked uh, document just before the weekend, and uh, some of the statements on that document, um, I would say a lot of New Zealanders would, would say, gosh, those seem like pretty reasonable statements. One law for all New Zealanders and, and everybody's uh, uh, sovereignty to own land that should be defended, that there shouldn't be one law for different people. This is what is being proposed in this legislation. It's an interesting dynamic with free speech, because in some ways, uh, what happened at Turanga Waiwai was saying, 
these subjects are off the table. They're not up for debate. These things are locked in place. How dare the government even raise the question of let's have a conversation about this? So in some ways, the protests are shutting down conversation. But, I mean, hey, as you say, there was plenty of conversation at Turanga Waiwai in the weekend. Well, that's right. And and I think uh, uh, we had representation from the Free Speech Union at our governance level and at our staffing level. Yeah. This was something that we wanted to participate in. Not not with we don't have a horse in this race yeah. other than good, productive dialogue, which uh, I think you and I agree is, is so absent in many parts of our society today. And so I think we can hold in one uh, hand that that having this hui Calling for Wananga is exactly in the spirit of free speech. Yep. The comments that my staff and, and, and members of our governance team made, though, that was that there was a lot of othering, if we can put it that way, yep. uh, of, of opponents. And so there was a lot of aroha, there was a lot of kotahitanga, mm. there was a lot of nakitanga for those that were thinking like you. Yes. Uh, but but there was a lot of othering of the governments uh, and, and, and perhaps according to some of, of perhaps Pakia in general and mm -hmm. kind of what they would define as a colonialist mindset. Mm -hmm. And so really, um, you know, to say that everyone should have a say is not to say, well, everyone's contribution is, is equal. <laughs> yeah. um, no, some people have daft ideas, but uh, we actually, we benefit from hearing those who have daft ideas and, and so we can identify them. And so I, I would say um, this is a good start. Hopefully this isn't the sum total of what we can offer in terms of a really uh, collaborative and constructive conversation around race relations in New Zealand. Race relations, again, not just in New Zealand, but across the Western world, particularly in the Anglo is is tearing at the fabric of yes. many of our societies and and so um when you know th and there are some absolutely condemnable ideas mm. that get thrown in the mix around race relations on on the many extremes as if there's only two there's many different <laughs> extremes yeah. of how we can cut that but by shutting out those opinions we only hurt ourselves mm. and so um I, I I think the 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 uh the wairua that that the the kingitanga brought to this uh was really commendable. There will always be elements that try and co-opt that though. Mm -hmm. And so again, this is a question: where will leadership stand up and say, actually, no, everyone gets to have their say? That's that's uh, what we really invested in. Now, uh, although David Seymour wasn't there, in some ways his presence was palpable. He was probably the topic of a lot of conversations at Turanga Waiwai over the weekend. Some people would say he's achieved what. Uh, what we haven't seen in decades is unity within Māoridom, unity that nobody likes uh, David Seymour, as it were. But in some ways, maybe he has achieved some of his objectives. Our na as a nation, we are discussing what does the treaty means? Who gets to decide that? What are some of the principles? And are these good principles for us as a nation moving forward? Do they need tweaking from the definitions of them uh, back in 1840? And who gets to decide that? Is that just a high court judge in isolation or is that something that that goes through the full democratic process as it were yeah and, and what i think uh, you know if there were two really notable absences that they were uh winston peters and 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 or shay jones yeah. and uh and david seymour uh all uh Tane Māori. And so uh, that's not something we hear very often in our media, a recognition that there is more re uh, representation at the very senior cabinet level mm. uh, and, and even uh, party leadership level uh, with Māori there than there has ever been. Yeah. And and really it's, it's Act in New Zealand First, both led by Māori, that are really pushing for this conversation. So again, this is where we must fight against this oversimplification, uh, this, this really childish notion that if you have a a certain skin color or if you have a certain ethnic background you will think a certain way yes. the, the, that is the definition of tribalism that is the definition of, of this tribal ideology it is identitarianism on steroids mm. and that has the, 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 i don't know if there's anything more fundamentally opposed to the notion of free speech than you will only think this way or you will only say these things yes. if you are x y and z and so this is an incredibly reductionist and, and very corrosive approach uh so i, I would say yes they have achieved we're, we're talking about uh, these issues right now, it's, mm -hmm. it's really positive that we have stimulated these conversations. Conversation for the sake of conversation, though, our, our opponents are right, does stand to be very destructive. Yeah. Uh, conversation with, with 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 love at its heart, with humility, mm -hmm. with, with, a, with a desire for unity, 
recognizing that our conceptions of those do differ is really what will take us forward. And so this is the start of, of a journey. Uh, I don't know how it's going to end yet. Mm. We may in the future look back on this hui and say that was the moment our nation really started to unravel. That is possible. Mm. Uh, in my opinion, if if uh, the uh, divisive uh, rhetoric of individuals like the Maori Party that say you will only think certain things if you are a th- certain ethnicity or a certain identity, if that's what really takes hold here, uh, we're in for a rough couple of years. Yeah. But alternatively, with some leadership, I think we could see this as a really positive point. There's certainly some leadership shown by King Tuhaitia in, in terms of his call to, to those gathered there to say, so how do we respond? How do we respond as Māori? We respond by being Māori. We respond by doubling down on what it means to be te ao Māori and, and for our tikanga and for our language. Uh, let's not be shy about who we are. Let's uh, let's make sure that our voices is heard. I thought were well, quite a conciliatory and positive speech from the Maori King. Well, and and at the heart of it was don't look to Wellington, yeah. don't look to your political leaders to tell you who you are. Mm-hmm. Own that, and I think that's true for every community. I I don't think there are many in New Zealand who have this desire for a, for a, a whitewash pun not intended uh, kind of a view of we we all have to be the same. I think there's something quite weird about the idea that we all have to think the same way, we all have to live the same way. Diversity can be a very beautiful thing, mm-hmm. uh, but I don't think we should look to political leaders to enable that, and and that's. Again, that's a very much at the heart of the free speech perspective is that we each have agency. We each have something to contribute that. So exactly as King uh, Haitia, you know, is championing there, stand up, own it, be proud yeah, of that. And yeah. for each of us, I think that should be true. No, very good indeed. Uh, Jonathan, wonderful to chat with you once again. It is going to be a doozy of a Waitangi this year. I'm certainly looking forward to that. And hey, thanks for being on the program. Thanks a lot, Andrew. Cheers.